Hey, great to have you back. Uh, well, we're looking at comping over all of me. Uh, comping is, um, yeah, it's, it's super fun. Um, and you have to learn how to comp because very often you're going to be the guy you know, that has to comp, that has to get through the beginning to the, from beginning to the end of the tune and, and allow the horn player or the violin player or whatever uh, to, uh, to get their turn, right? Uh, so comping is, um, is uh, crucial uh, to a guitar player and learning how to do it well. Uh, comping, first of all, does mean uh, um, playing in time, right? Uh, you're, you're almost playing the role of, of, a, of a drum kit in many cases, especially if you're just uh, uh, playing with, uh, with a trio. Like, like, let's say you're playing with a violinist and, a, and an upright a uh, bass player and a guitar player. You're you're going to get stuck playing the harmony, right? That that's all there is to it. And you've got to not not only know the harmony, but you've got to be able to make that thing motor along and feel comfy. Um, this uh, this tune says here at the top medium swing, and uh, and I can give you an idea of how that medium swing sort of sort of would feel. Um, and uh, but it's going to be a little quick for the for the fretboard tracker but i'm going to give you an idea anyway we're sort of looking at this i'll play the first 16 measures um. wasn't actually the first 16 that was 32 um but that's sort of a medium swing feel right and uh and that's sort of what we're what, what we want to take a look at uh today so the first uh the first chord that i'm using is actually a c6 chord i, I love this chord uh it, it, it the voicing is like this and you're, we're 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 muting that that fifth string Right, and that mute happens very naturally just with your with your uh, second finger. Okay, C major six. Yeah, I mean you could play a C major seven, but uh, but I find that C major seven in this style of tune is just a little too too loungy sounding, you know, too like you know. Yeah, just too loungy sounding, and 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 this uh, this six chord is nice, nice and quick to change, and it doesn't quite bite as much as as uh, as that C major seven with the major seven interval. Uh, yeah, so it's just a one three five chord with a six in it, right? One three five six that spells the C six chord. Whenever you see a C major seven chord, you can play a C six chord. If you like the sound of a C six better. You know, go for the C6, unless it's clashing with the melody, but that, that's highly unlikely. Um, okay, so there's, there's our C6, and now we want to go to the E7. And the E7, I'm just playing the inside four. You can also play the, uh, uh, a, the fifth. On the bottom, it works great. Sometimes, sometimes it doesn't work quite as well. Uh, and and this and this form of the two, uh, the the chord, I'm sure you, you must know. It's it's just like a C7 chord, right? Except I'm just moving it up to the uh, to the fifth fret. So so here's our C6, and then the next chord is the E7. All right. Um, I should say something um, about about fingering, um, and and this this is is about guide fingers. Uh, what I'm doing actually here, and it may be difficult for you to see it, but the fourth finger, my baby finger, I slide down with my baby finger, 
I don't take it off the fretboard, and, it, it, and so I don't have to replace everything. See, and then it, it, it's in common with the C major six, right? Keep my baby finger down, slide it down two frets, and then build the C, the E seven chord around that. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing again as I move to the A7 chord. I take my baby finger, move it down one fret, and play the A7. Now you'll notice uh, on the uh, uh, fretboard reader that I'm using a three-note version of A7, which is really cool because it's so super simple. And now I can take exactly that shape uh, that finger shape and place it down for the D minor. Now that that's 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 cool. See that? It's it's super quick and and not only is it super quick, it's nice and economical, harmonically uh, economical, uh, because we're not we don't in the A seven chord we don't really need that fifth in the chord. You know, it's sort of redundant. We've got the root, we've got the seven, and we've got the three. So, you know, good enough. Uh, when I go to the D minor, uh, I've got the root, the seven, the flat seven, and the flat three is up on top. That, that's all I. That's all I need. I. I, I don't. I don't need any more than that. Uh, it, it. It's a nice balanced sound. Not, the, 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 done deal, you know. All right, so, so far we have the C major six. Baby finger guides down. Baby finger guides down to the three note A7. Exactly the same chord shape up to the uh, middle four strings. And then we return to the E7. No fingers in common there. I, you know, I always look for common fingers, but there's none in this case. So E7 and then A minor. And I'm playing A minor 7, not just the three note chord. It just sounds sw swingier and nicer to play the minor 7. And the second finger on the bottom barred three strings here. Uh, I've got the root on the bottom. Uh, flat seven, three, and five on top. And then the same D7 again. And um, I, I think I'm going to go to this D, D minor seven that we've already played. And this is a cool transition to G7. Check this out, okay? Check this out. I'm going to change one note. That's all I have to change to get from D minor seven to the G7 and I've got this this baby finger or this this seven the, the, the third of the D minor right is I, I keep my finger down on that and when I change to the G7 it, it's now the seventh on top of the you know the G7 chord it becomes the seventh of the G7 but I don't move my finger right and I just voice lead this one note down a semitone. D minor, 7, G7, heck of a lot easier than, you know, those great big bulky chord forms that, that I mean, they're fine, they're, you know, there's nothing wrong with those big bulky chord forms, sometimes, uh, but, uh, but it, it's, it's, it's uh, I would argue that it's more effective to play these abbreviated chord forms and think of voices leading. Think of one note leading to another note, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, and then the B section, C major six again. Just, I, you know, I'm just going to go back up to the... Oh, well, no, you know what? Let's go to the C major... Let's go to the C major seven this time because I'm down here. All right, and the... And the, um, the um, harmony of the tune is firmly established and I don't feel so bad about using the C major 7 this time and then E7 as we did before and then the the A7 
lots of common fingers there. Wow, that's really cool. They've got that tritone in common between the E7 and the A7. Check it out. I'll show you what I mean. This is super important. E7. Now here, I'll take these two fingers away here, and there's my tritone, you see? And then that just moves down a semitone. And then I just have to add the bass note to that, you see? E7, tritone. Right, there's gonna be lots more on tritones later. Tritones are rock. I mean, they, they are, um, uh, they're all up, they're what what dominant seven chord movement is all about and this is just a little tiny example of that so there's e7 with the tritone going down a semitone so you've got two fingers in common for the for that chord and then d minor and then we'll shoot up and do uh, to fret eight and do an f major seven like that, like, like we played C major 7 down here. So this is the 4 chord in the key of C. And then uh, to the uh, F minor, we can just, you know, everything's, everything's right underneath my fingers here. So all I have to do is keep everything the same, just, you know, slide these down. I'll just get rid of the 5th. Right, and then we're going to skip the C major. And then here, E minor. And we do that same movement again, A7. So easy, so, and that sounds great. Inside four strings, D minor seven, same, same uh, chord voicing. G7. And since it says C6, I think I'll play C6 up here. Right, and then we've got a turnaround, but I'm not going to worry about the turnaround because there's a thousand turnarounds we could, yeah, well, maybe a hundred, maybe 127. Uh, okay, so that's uh, the, that, that's a, a rhythm style uh, in uh, in all of me, and and I think you'll find that um, nice and balanced. You know, they, they, a, a lot of the. Uh, uh, the the trouble with chord picture books and that kind of thing is they don't look at the at the context right. I mean you can't go to a book and start flipping pages and like okay I'm going to look for an E seven and then I'm going to look for a C major seven and then I'm going to you know and you're and you're just flying all over the fretboard when all you have to do is and the, the fact of the matter is that the that the that at that sort of intermediate level when you're when you're learning your chords it can be technically more difficult than a guy that's played for a long time and knows that all he has to do is move one finger to, to move to a new chord. Now, isn't that better? Not only is, is it better and easier to play, but it sounds better because you know you've just got the one, uh, the one voice. <laughs> just hear that one voice moving and then the two voices on the outside right right isn't that nice yeah it's just so simple right and so if you start building a repertoire like that where you know uh where you know where you're where, where the difference between one chord and another chord and uh, and how to make transitions like this and and obviously if it works here if, if if this voicing works here in the middle four strings you're going to find voicings that work just the same on the top four strings or on the bottom four strings or whatever the case might be right so that's uh, that's a nice uh, a nice start for uh, for rhythm style in uh, uh, in all of me and I hope that was uh, you know that was a help for you. I hope you learned a couple of new things. And um, yeah, I was just going to say uh, that I, I forgot to say that earlier. You know, um, when you're playing and when you're playing in a rhythm style, um, th th this whole rhythm style thing st sort of started in the Charlie Christian era uh, with guys playing uh, in big bands. And uh, and they would uh, th it started with the banjo, actually. And the banjo had a drum skit. 
uh, and and it had a drum skin, so it, so it would cut through uh, the uh, the big band, right? And and that has never left uh, that 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 role of of uh, the banjo player and his drum skin, and in many cases has flipped over to the guitar player, and uh, in, in in smaller in smaller formats or even big formats. If you if you play in a big band, you're going to have to you're going to have to hold it down, man. And uh, and 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 these small chords can can really um, move quickly and change easily and never compromise that 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 uh, getting getting the time just solid and right. Okay, so if that was a help, um, <laughs> uh, please uh, please like and uh, subscribe if you have any ideas for videos that that. Uh, you would like to see, please let us know if you want us want us to tackle a specific tune, your your favorite tune of all time. You know, let us know what that is, and we'll do an analysis and a you know and a, and show you maybe show you some stuff. Okay, thanks for dropping by. Uh, that was uh, comping through all of me.